Andrea Mather, Adriana, Adrena Manor, and I gave Mather. Oh. everybody it's your girl Jay and today I'm here with my June wrap up for 2021 part 3 I read a total of 21 books this month but one of them was a textbook that I had to read front to back for one of my college courses so I won't be talking about that one because nobody cares so we're saying I read a total of 20 books this month this is going to be split into four different parts this is the third of those four parts so if you're interested in the other wrap ups I will leave them down below once they're uploaded and without further ado let us get started. The first book I have is From Little Tokyo with Love. This is by Sarah Kuhn and I gave this 3.5 out of 5 stars. This follows 17 year old Rika who has never really felt like she belongs. She is biracial and she lives with her two aunts and two princess like cousins after her mother died in childbirth. During the annual parade Rika ends up locking eyes with Grace Kumara who is Little Tokyo's rising movie star and her whole world is turned upside down. With the help from movie star Hank Chen, Rika goes on a journey to discover whether or not Grace is actually her mother and it's like the story of that. This was a pretty average romance in my opinion. I liked Hank more than Rika which is probably not the best since Rika was the main character but she just was very frustrating at times. I do like that she had flaws and wasn't perfect but sometimes I just wanted to shake her and be like girl what the fuck. I did like the exploration of her feelings and her anger issues but like I said I enjoyed Hank and his character arc and his struggles with being in the limelight a lot more than I liked Rika's side of the story. I really liked Belle and Rory. They are Rika's cousins and they were just very supportive and aware of Rika's feelings at all times and I really liked seeing their relationship in this but overall like I said I did think it was a very cute romance and it was fun while it lasted so 3.5 out of 5 stars. The next book I read was Killing November by Adriana Mather and I gave this a 3.5 out of 5 stars. After a scare in the family, November is sent to a very secretive boarding school. At this school, students learn various skills such as knife throwing, poisons, and stealth in order to become assassins and spies. November doesn't really understand why her father chose to send her to this school because she doesn't really fit in at all and then a student ends up murdered one night and November needs to decide who she can align herself with and who to avoid altogether and it's like the story of that. This was a pretty fast-paced read. I read it very very quickly. I think that November had a case of the special snowflake trope. For the majority of the book she was very naive and nobody would tell her anything and then in the matter of like 20 minutes she talked to this one person and they told her literally everything and it just didn't really make sense. I also found it kind of annoying how she would learn somebody's name and then try to break it down through like root words and stuff and like the origin of it to try to figure out things about them. Them because like I'm sorry but when parents name their kids they're not usually like oh well this is the meaning of this which means that this person is secretive because this is what the root word of this is. I'm sorry it's just like you like the name so you name your kid that or it's like a family name or something like that. Like it's not that deep. So it was just really annoying that she did it with literally everybody she met. But I did like how we never really knew who November could trust because one second they would be really good and then the next second they would do something shady and you're like mm, maybe not. I also really enjoyed learning about all the backstories of the different families in the strategy. I thought that was probably the most interesting part of the book. Overall I think that it was fun while it lasted but it's definitely a very trope heavy book so I mean just be aware of that going in but it was a fun time so 3.5 out of 5 stars. Next I read Where the Rhythm Takes You by Sarah Doss. I ended up giving this a 4 out of 5 stars. This follows 17 year old Reina who lost her mother two years ago. Everybody seems to be moving on including her best friend Aiden who left Tobago to go pursue you his music career. She has not seen him since he left and they had a very messy breakup. 
Lately, Reyna's father has been putting a lot of the responsibilities of running the family resort on her, and that's when Aiden shows up with his famous friends for a VIP package at the resort, and Reyna is tasked with being the island tour guide for their group, and it's like the story of that. So this is actually a retelling of Persuasion by Jane Austen. I have never read Persuasion, but I really liked this book. I It's a second chance romance. I enjoyed both Reyna and Aiden's characters. I also really liked the side characters of Aiden's friend group. I think that they were all really well developed. I also liked how we got chapters from the past and we got to see how Reyna and Aiden's relationship started and then ultimately how it ended as well. The one thing I will say is that I don't think that these characters read as if they were 17. They seemed a lot older than that in my opinion, but I still really liked it. I kind of just forgot that they were 17 until it would be mentioned and then I was like, oh yeah, I forgot that they're that young. Like they seem way more mature for their age than what they're supposed to be. The way that the author described Tobago just made it seem so beautiful and it's definitely on my bucket list for travel visits one day if I ever actually travel in my life, but it just seemed so beautiful and you could really tell that the author loves this place. I also really liked the exploration of grief. I think that the way that Raina is dealing with her emotions and her mother's death were just really well done, but overall I think that it's a really fun read with really great characters, so four out of five stars. Next up, I have a Queen of Ruin by Tracy Banghart. There isn't really much I can say about this without spoiling the first book. This is the second book to Grace and Fury. I gave it a 3 out of 5 stars. This takes place pretty much right after the first book ends, but I definitely think that the first book was a lot better than this. I honestly think that it could have been a standalone and would have been completely fine without this part of the story. I still think that this book was enjoyable, but... I was just expecting more from it since I liked the first book so much. There's no recap at all at the beginning of this book, so I would definitely recommend reading the first book again if you want to avoid any confusion. I liked that this book features so many strong female characters. I think that Nomi and Serena have really grown from the first book. I also think that the male characters in this were very one-dimensional. There wasn't really any character development from the first book onto this one, so it was just kind of disappointing. Like, just give me all the female characters and leave the males out and it would have been the exact same book. You know? I also wish that there was like an epilogue a couple years after the book finishes to see where the characters ended up because it was just wrapped up like a little bit too nicely so I would just like to know what happens next. Like, we definitely don't need another book but like you know a couple pages on this is where they're at five years later would have been nice but overall it was a very quick read so three out of five stars. And then the final book that I'm going to talk about for this part of the wrap up is Blood for My Blood by Barry Lega. This is the third and final book in the I Hunt Killers trilogy, which I adore and I think is very underrated. I ended up giving this 4.5 stars. It basically follows Jasper Dent and his friends, and Jasper is the son of the most notorious serial killer named Billy Dent. His entire life is basically trying to not succumb to the serial killer instincts that his father instilled in him at a very early age, so that's all I'm gonna say about the summary of it since this is the last book. I don't want to give anything away, but it is absolutely wonderful. I think that this was the perfect conclusion to the trilogy. The way that it wraps up was just so satisfying, which I am honestly not very used to in trilogies. Usually I just want more, but it was just so perfectly done. And it's a series that once you pick it up, you can't stop reading it until you're done because it's just so addictive. I've just grown to love these characters so much and it's weird to say that because they're serial killers so like it's weird but I think that Jasper is such a complex character and it was just so interesting to read about his relationship with his dad Billy because any scene that Billy is in is just so creepy because like I said he's a serial killer. The way that he talks and the way that he thinks is just 
Ugh. Like it's gross, but so intriguing. Jess is definitely struggling a lot more with the darkness inside him in this book than he was in the previous. And I think that's because Billy is more in the forefront of his life again, which is interesting because once Billy was in jail, he didn't really have to worry about him too much. But now that he's back, became very interesting. I'm still a huge fan of Howie, who is Jazz's best friend. He is definitely the comic relief that is needed in a lot of this book because it gets very gory very, very quickly, so definitely trigger warning for that. I definitely recommend this series to everybody if you can handle gore, but it is just so underrated in my opinion. It is such a fun series, which sounds weird because it is about serial killers, but highly highly recommend. I gave this one a 4.5 out of 5 stars. Alright everybody, so that was my June wrap up part 3. I will leave the other two slash the fourth one once it's uploaded down below so you guys can check those out if you're interested. But let me know down below if you've read any of these books and what you thought of them and I will see you all in my next video. Goodbye!